Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm very excited to uh, be here. I had a very good intro, but um, just so you know, um, I run the mobile product team at American Express. In fact, I've been looking after the Amex mobile app for the last 10 years. Um, I'm here to tell you a bit of a story, and the story is really about how we keep evolving the experience of the Amex app. But before that, I want to see hands up from American Express customers who use the app. Let me see. Okay, I think we've got a good audience today, um, actually. Let's get into it. Um, first off, where we are today. So we've really been on a bit of a quest to set the standard for mobile uh, in the industry. And I say the standard because we always want to be the better app um, out there. We don't really look at our traditional competitors uh, when it comes to our experience um, in the mobile channel. In fact, we're always looking for what is the latest best-in-class pattern and experience um, out there. And that's why we feel that what we provide to customers is really a bit different from what our competitors do. So, for example, if you use the app, you will notice, and you can see here, uh, that we've got an activity feed of few with American Express. And it's very much more than what, you know, Twitter, Instagram, you name it, all the major apps um, out there do it to really drive engagement with their customers. Now, um, we've really come a long way. So we've got literally millions of daily um, actives. The app is the main interaction channel for American Express um, that's these days. We are also a growth engine for the company. So if you like, we've really ticked the box uh, when it comes to you know, um, driving business model. But I think what makes me even more happy is how satisfied our customers are with the app. So 75% of those are very satisfied if you were going to see actually very satisfied and satisfied, that would take it up to 95%. Um, and additionally, uh, we've won a bunch of awards, both in the US and international. In fact, um, in the US market, we've won the best credit card app for three times over the past um, few years. Now, you may be wondering how we go here, um, right? So really over the past um, 10 years, the app has been in continuous um, evolution. And every single time, we're trying to address a different opportunity or a different problem that we have um, in our hands. So what you can see on the screen is how the app used to look like back in 2010. And yeah, apps were that ugly uh, back in the day, um, if you like. But you know, that's kind of the whole evolution um, over time from 2010 all the way to um, today. Um, now, that is only really possible by building a number of blocks um, among the years. Starting with, we've got a very um, scalable global architecture. So we've got the app available um, in 22 uh, markets. So, you know, you need an architecture that really allows you to move very quickly um, globally. Um, we now have a very comprehensive feature set. The reason why I've got that uh, over there is if you've been you know, uh, around long enough in the industry, you may remember the days that actually mobile apps were playing catch up with websites. That's no longer the case. I'm, you know, I'm very thankful um, about that. We've also been very careful when it comes to balancing the focus on the enterprise need uh, and customer needs. So, you know, as a product manager, you always have that tension uh, that you've got um, to resolve. And I'd say that we've done a fairly uh, good job um, with it. Um, I know that people don't necessarily like processes. However, a good enough or a solid a process actually enable um, success. I'm going to talk a little bit about experimentation and the importance of having the, a bit of a framework um, for it. And last but definitely not least, we are very proud of the team that we've got. And not only you know, the product team that I'm very privileged um, to lead, but also the partnership that we've got going with uh, design, engineering, and analytics. It's just really a few of us here, so I think we can probably uh, see our little secret, um, if you like. So, you know, we believe that our success really comes from, we're always looking for what's next, search for growth, um, et cetera. We are not really afraid to fail, make mistakes, et cetera, and we do learn um, from that. So the framework actually is very simple. So you just need to ke keep getting at it, uh, right? And I think that's kind of, you know, um, the key thing um, here. So 
at any point in time, you're going to have either a problem uh, that you've got to solve. Maybe there is an opportunity that you want to go um, after or has been presented to you um, as a team. So the first thing is like, OK, ideate, come up with your hypothesis, um, et cetera. How you're going to you know, work around that problem, how you're going to go after um, that opportunity. The next bit is, OK, put that into action. Um, right? You're going to have to try to grow those um, ideas and really drive um, results. Obviously, I wish this was linear. It is not. And probably most of the time, you're going to keep going back to the drawing board. Uh, right? So you know that pivot as needed is really um, key here. But once that you make it work, right, and you have driven growth, and you have driven those results, et cetera, the next bit is, OK, now what? So don't stop there. Repeat all over again. Um, right? And I think that discipline is going to take you um, very far. Now, we believe that the reason why this works for us is because you've got a bunch of things going on in the team at the same time. So you need, I'm going to call it a culture that really encourages autonomy um, and focus. So we've got our own interpretation of the squad-based model. I know that you know, some people have a concerns um, about it, but I think the premise of Having people with a clear remit of focus uh, and they've got that autonomy to you know, drive value um, over time, it actually works. And at least for us, it has worked out uh, quite well um, over the years. The other thing is product is never alone. You cannot really do anything on, on your own, right? So let's not forget um, about that. So I really love the analogy of the three amigos, product design, engineering, even analytics. So, you know. This mantra of one team, one dream, we live it um, every day. And the other thing is, you know, you need to have passion, desire. You want to be evolving um, all the time. So don't forget to keep looking for what is the next opportunity? What is the next problem that you want to either solve for your customers or maybe solve for your company or maybe solve it for the market um, at large? So, um, I thought it would be good to look at actually at a bit of an example of how you know that framework, if you like, or those guidelines um, work for us um, in the team. So this is going to be about how over the past year or so we've been evolving the app to our next um, iteration. And our starting point as a problem or opportunity, um, right? And I think I can probably use both of them interchangeably. Is at some point, you may get to having actually too many features. And we had too many features. So we had 50 plus features, all of them with competing objectives in terms of what they were supposed to drive for different parts of the enterprise, what they were supposed to solve for customers um, at large. And that was created a lot of pressure on two things, discoverability and engagement. So on the left-hand side of the screen, what you've got is, OK, when it comes to engagement depth, you see how our tab bar um, used to look like, five main sections, um, et cetera. And underneath, the relative engagement for those sections. right? And what you will notice very quickly is the majority of engagement just happened in the home tab of the app, which is to be expected. I mean, we land people there um, anyway. Um, right? But the point to make here is, Sometimes your biggest asset or the thing that has made you very successful over time can become a challenge. And what we realized is, look, by giving you everything you kind of need as soon as you arrive um, in the experience, you have very little of an incentive to just keep going uh, beyond that, uh, right? So I think the learning here is, you know, sometimes a little bit of friction actually helps to drive um, certain results, right? The other important point is, you know, this mantra of build it and they will come, I'm sorry, but that doesn't simply, uh, doesn't work, um, right? So you need to have tools in your toolkit to really drive engagement, awareness, you need to work with your uh, product marketing team or even you know, the same uh, product team, et cetera, to think about not only the experience that you want to have, but how you're going to get people to get there, how you're going to get people to be aware of it, um, et cetera. And if that was a, like a, an enough large problem, um, at the same time, um, American Express decided to enter into the banking foray. So now we offer uh, 
checking accounts for both um, consumer and commercial customers. And what that really meant for us was, well, we had a framework that was really uh, designed for you having a particular card in wallet with American Express. And we had to start moving from that to go beyond the card. Um, and also start really designing or thinking about the product more in context of customers rather than um, card members. So, how we went about it. Um, we did um, a couple of things. Um, the first one is we ran a parallel discovery track. And the small digression I'm going to make here is I'm a big believer in dual track agile delivery. So if you haven't really come across uh, that, look it up uh, later on today. But really, the idea behind it is at any point in time in your product team, you're going to have two tracks. One that is very much focused on BAU um, delivery and kind of driving value and implementing the backlog uh, that you've got, um, I guess, already. Um, already. Are you going to have another one that is very much about prepping for what's going to come the next six months, the next 12 months, the next 18 months, um, et cetera? So we started in the discovery track, ideating and really envisioning in terms of what could we do to try to solve some of the problems and leverage the opportunities um, that we had. Um, in fact, what you see there is some of the very early wireframes um, that we um, created. So that's how kind of um, the thinking the team um, started. Obviously, that evolved quite a lot. It went through a lot of um, testing, um, et cetera. But the general idea was like we wanted to do four new things, or we felt that there were like four big ideas that we wanted to go after. The first one was okay, the information architecture that we had didn't work, so let's make it customer centric. That makes sense. Um, secondly, we felt that probably the layout of the app required to be a little bit of streamlining um, and also create power shortcuts or really ways in which you can you know, really help people discover some of the additional features or functionality that the app um, got um, for them. Because we felt that we we're going to embark into this journey of really um, you know, evolving massively and changing structurally um, the app, we figured that was probably like a good opportunity to do a design um, overhaul. Why not? Uh, more scope. And on top of that, we were like, OK, let's also try to solve for financial clarity, which is an area where we have struggled a little bit um, over the years. The other part of the journey was about how you test all of these ideas or how you test your hypothesis, um, right? And I don't think there's like one single answer here. But what is clear to me is you do need in your toolkit at least a couple of ways in which you can experiment. The path that we took was, OK, we've got the app in many markets. So why don't we use the UK um, app? That's a bit of a um, test bed. So we've got the UK app with all of these changes as a test bed. And we'll keep you know, developing as BAU, the US, um, and many other markets. So we did a foundational build um, in the UK. In fact, the images that you see, uh, that, that, that is exactly what we implemented. Um, in the UK market. And how we went was, OK, UK market as a launch pad. We had a bunch of hypotheses on discoverability and engagement. We also had a very, I'd say, tight analytical framework. So we kept looking at data almost on a daily basis. right? So I don't know how many different pivots, adjustments we made after results, um, et cetera. But you know, in the end, some of those ideas, actually, we felt that they were ready to just be rolled out um, across the whole lot and therefore um, to grow them. And when it came to the US market um, in particular, we figured that maybe rather than doing a big ban approach where people will feel like, oh, wow, someone has moved my cheese, um, et cetera, let's try to do it in a more um, iterative um, manner. That leads me to actually results. Um, we are very pleased that um, not only we transform the overall experience with very little uh, disruption, um, customer satisfaction remain um, very high. 
we improve depth of engagement. So, you know, we really tick the box uh, when it came to those um, hypotheses. You can see here how it started, how it's going. Obviously, it looks very different, um, right? But the interesting thing here is, even though it just feels like a bit of a very massive uh, visual change, there's a lot more that is happening behind the scenes. And what that really does is it really enables us for future growth. And future growth for the app, and we expect we're going to keep growing um, the app, but also for future growth as Amex try to bring more products, new services um, to the marketplace. So we really have like a very solid framework for the next two to three years to, be, to keep growing um, alongside uh, the enterprise. That brings me to actually back to the framework. So now what? Uh, we completed that um, evolution. So what do we do now um, as a team? Um, we believe the next leg of evolution, among many other um, opportunities, and I guess I can really share um, all of them in a public space, but uh, we feel that we've got a very good opportunity to create an, a, what I would call a coherent family of apps. So until very recently, you've got a standalone um, app, one app to rule them all, uh, right? And that's the app that um, my team um, runs with. We're moving to a model where we're going to have a family of apps at American Express. A family of apps basically mean a group of apps with related uh, functions or functionality. Uh, they usually have the ability to integrate with one another, and they are often owned by the same company. So think about the Meta family of apps, the Google suite of apps, um, etc. And probably the key takeaway here that you know, I would like you all to, to take from here is interoperability um, is key. But additionally, we feel like you need to have like a very clear value proposition and customer segment uh, when it comes to the different apps that you've got um, in the family. So for example, the core Amex app, um, I'm going to call it all customers membership. We're going to have an app that is going to have a greater focus on, let's say, specialized use cases when it comes to commercial customers. So SME, cash flow management. Amex also has a standalone business very much focused on, on dining. And that's where um, the rest of the app uh, comes into play. And, you know, we are very excited about this next leg um, evolution and you know, many other things uh, that we are working through um, at the minute. And that's really all from me. Thanks a lot.